Father, when we begin to rule in every in every area of our lives, in our offices, I begin to rule in righteousness. You begin to rule in righteousness. Our nation will be exalted. Lord, we receive this in the name of jesus mande liku santo mambre migendo zuze ze canto ligere jende ligo duso mande rico to soto dide jende brezu zonde liko tombre dize je ke tondo ligere igedo santo ligere there are people that are put under us in our offices there are people that are put under us in our workplaces let's talk to god this morning i will begin to lead them to rule over in righteousness i will begin to teach righteousness i will begin to teach righteousness and this will translate to god to my nation being exalted mande kosonto limbre migendu zoso zinde like toshi tende mambre duzo zonde ligere mande sonto manga tushe ketonde ligere ruso zonde ikato mande likato soto dede manka sutonde ibra duzo Father, we give you praise this morning. Lord, we give you praise this morning. We give you praise this morning. Mande lika sotonde imbre duzo jeke tonde ligere mande kasonto ligere migede gede boko shende ligere reke to sotonde imbre duzo mande lige duzo tonde ligere makasunto lige makashoto dide rende lika to soto. Lord, even in the church of God, we ask God. God, the righteousness will take its place in the name of Jesus. We we'll begin to do the right thing. We we'll begin to teach the right word of God. We we'll begin to no, 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 not the sermon that we will be teaching just to captivate or to take people. But Father, such righteous words, mande liko tosoto that will provoke people to do it right. Mande kasunde lege doshke dim brazuso zede liko tosoto ligere in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father, for your word says, whatever we ask according to your will, you will do for us. We ask this, O oh God, that we might live in peace. We ask this, O oh God, that your name alone be glorified. We ask that nation will come to the knowledge of you, O oh God. Father, we declare that this is established in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. hallelujah good morning church i didn't get a response good morning church good morning god bless you all this morning i have just a little task to do this morning to bring to us the unfolding of our 11th anniversary but i'm going to take a hinge on what my brother said from the scripture he says and God is looking for a man who will stand in the gap. And the theme of our anniversary this year is Wake Up the Mighty Men, which is taken from the book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 9 to 10. I'm going to ask them to put it up. And I want it to be there throughout so that we can have an understanding and where we are going. It says, proclaim this amongst the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plows into swords. The message translation says, Beat your shovels into swords. And your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. He said, He said, That God is looking for somebody to stand in the gap. And God is saying to us, That we are the people to stand in the gap, But we need to wake up. We are the mighty men that God is looking for to stand in the gap. This anniversary is about us getting into the place where God wants us to be. To begin to impact systems, organizations, society. So this anniversary is about you and is about me. Let me just push to the next slide. Of course, we know that we're going to run this anniversary this year. We're going to do it for just two days. We're going to run it for the whole month of october so we're starting on the 30th of september and the first of october which will be our major celebration service and then every other saturday and sunday throughout the whole month of october so we're having the 7th and the 8th we're having the 14th and the 15th the 21st and the 22nd the 20th and the 29th every saturday and sunday all right and saturday evenings we are going to have q and a sessions it's going to be a relaxed session a relaxed atmosphere we're going to have different menus that day. We're going to have a great time in the presence of God. We want to do things that are different, small chops, 
want to do boli and fish, want to do suya, you know, for the events on Saturday. But it's going to be about us, where we can interact, begin to ask questions, understand about the things of God and where we are going, understand things about the prophetic, understand things about systems and how we can do better as individuals and as a church and as a people. Next slide. Our ministers for this whole month are these people, this Pastor Tunde Amosu. We're having Pastor Gandhi Olaoye, who is coming in from the U.S. We're having Pastor Funola Craig. We're having Pastor Badu Gulano. And we're having Pastor Austin Olobese. But bear in mind, we're saying, wake up the mighty man. Next slide. One of the things we're doing this year as a church is this. We don't want it to be like every other anniversary. We want there to be an impact. Not whereby we will come and we will go. We want us to have a tangible experience. Something we can physically hold on to. Something we can physically see. And therefore we have prayed and we have looked up to the face of God. And we have come up with this. An empowerment investment cooperative. In other words, they call it impact investment cooperative. That's what it's going to be. And the essence of this cooperative is to bring us into a community. It's a platform that will create jobs. It's a platform, let me, let me put it this way. One of the things we want to do is, those of you who are farmers, create an avenue for a market where people will come into church. You want to buy chicken, you want to buy meat. You buy it at a very cheap price. So it gives farmers a platform to sell their products. It gives people to come to deliver. It gives you an opportunity to buy food at a cheaper rate. Some people are already farming. Maybe you don't know. We have people amongst us who are having hectares of lands of farms of rice and so on. We want to bring that to you. We want to create jobs for people who don't have jobs. This is what we want to do. We want there to be an impact in the church. We want there to be an impact in the society. That is what this anniversary is really about. We want to wake up ourselves and stand in the place and position where God wants us to be in the society because the church is the only organization that exists for its non-members so it's more than just you and i it's about taking our rightful place and position as a church as a people be impacted ourselves and also impact the systems and the societies out there the next slide these are just things that we want to do along the way we want to upgrade our church systems upgrade our church instruments and we have put the things we want to do there we want to impact the junior church and so on and so forth next slide these are things we want to do. We want to clear this stage. We want to bring in wireless microphones and make sure this is clear. Next one. We want to change our lighting in the church. As you notice, it's dull. So we're thinking about doing this. If you look at this very well, you'll see that the screen already at the back there is already what we have. We want to complement it with the lighting. Why? I'm going somewhere. Just hung on. Next slide. We want to upgrade our media. Don't worry about the figures. You'll see where I'm going in the morning in a minute. That's what I'm saying. I'm skipping all this. This is where I'm going. We want to have an application on our phones called Bridge on the Go, whereby you can access messages, whereby we can access the songs the choir will record, whereby we can access video teachings, other teachings, not necessarily to TBN, but it will be on your phone at the click of a button. We've started to work on this already. So sooner or later, you will have it on your phone. And that becomes a platform for us. It becomes a platform for the society. But for us to get here, we need to do all those other things at the background. Next slide. This is just a total run expenditure. Don't worry about the figures. Forget about the figures. We will get there. It's not the point of focus. Just move on to the next slide. That's the total figure. It's not something we have to kill ourselves over in one sense but i know that we're going to get there but the focus is this and that's why i said they should leave up that scripture so you can pull down this i want to concentrate back on this you can pull down this let me go back here to where i started from he said god is looking for a man to stand in the gap for us to stand in the gap we need to awake the mighty men that are within us it is there god is calling us to a war god is saying wake up let all the men draw near. Let them come up. In other words, arise once again to what he wants us to be. And for us to do that, we need to go through all that. But this morning, remember the focus is that at the end of this anniversary, 
We want to see men stand on their own. We want to see men become business owners. We want to see men become wealth creators. We want to see men impact other men. We want to see families impact other families. The bottom line and bottom core of this anniversary is that you are impacted. Not just goose pimples. I'm talking about a physical impact that you can see that will transcend for many years to come down the line. That is the focus of this anniversary this year. So I'm going to ask us this morning to take up an offering. We're going to continue. It may take us some time to complete it, but we will get there and it shall be done. But this morning, remember, it's about impact. It's about you. It's about me becoming a better person and standing in the position where God wants me to be. You know, the Bible says that the work of the wicked is going to be transferred into the hands of the righteous. We're going to have to do it ourselves. Amen. I want you to bow your heads this morning with me. We're going to take up our tithes and our offerings now. But at the same time, I want you to begin to look into your heart. Begin to make pledges. You can write it down. We'll give you details of a detailed account down the line that we'll continue to use and give you updates regularly as we go through the phases and as we get there. But more than this, begin to say, Lord, as we begin to draw near to this anniversary, let my life be impacted for the good. Let me be awakened. Remember, mighty men do exploits. Remember the mighty men of David just because of a cup of water. The exploits they did. Remember the mighty men with Gideon. May I become impacted to be mighty to take my place and my position. That's what is priority and that is what's key. Father, we thank you for everything that has been said this morning. Lord, as we lift up our tithes, our offerings, our gifts of love, as we are committing in our hearts, in our spirits, to make pledges. Lord, we release our faith. We take an extra step beyond the normal, beyond the ordinary. And Lord, we ask that you will honor it. Lord, you will breathe upon it. Lord, you will bless it. Lord, you will multiply it. Father, we thank you this morning for it. That you will use it for your glory. We thank you for the anniversary in advance. We thank you for the things that you will do in advance. We thank you because there will be a difference in our lives. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. We shall be impacted and we shall be an impact. Mighty men shall arise. Blessed be your name, O God. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And let the people of God say amen. Good morning, church. Um, I want us to do something this morning. I want you to look close to the person beside you and tell him or her that God is exceptional. Yeah, and tell another person that God is unconventional. And tell another person that God is phenomenal. Then say again that every other God is a learner. Yeah, then tell yourself that God is intentional. Yeah, we're going to do a song this morning, and I want us to do it together. I want us to rock this out to, together. It's titled Intentional. It's a very common song. So let's go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One, two, ready. Yeah. All things are working for my good, yeah, cause he's intentional, never failing, and all that all, all things are working for my good, yeah, cause he's intentional, yeah, never failing, all things, yeah. Cause it's intentional. intentional Yeah, and it's never fading 
All things are working, yeah. Cause he's intentional, yeah. Yeah, and it's never fading. Yeah, one more time. All things are working, yeah, yeah. That all things are working for my good. I know that all things are working for my good. Yeah. Oh, I know that all things are working for my good. Okay, all right, it's up. And I don't have to worry cause it's working for me. Yeah, it's working for me. I believe it's working for me. Is it working for you? Oh yeah, cause I don't have to worry cause it's working for me. Yeah, and it's working for me and you. Yeah, it's working for me. I don't have to worry. Yeah. Oh, I don't have to worry. It's working for me, yeah. And I can hold my hands up high. So get your confidence back today. Cause I don't have to worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Although I can't see how. I know that he's intentional, yeah. Oh, he's intentional. And he's been doing it for a long time, yeah. I'm keeping my place now. It's intentional. It's intentional. And it's intentional. And it's ever. You guys are looking at me. I see you. God is intentional. Anything that happens to you today, just dust it off. Because everything is going to work together for your good. So let's say, it's intentional. Yeah. Oh, it's intentional. And it's never, never fading. It's intentional. Oh, it's intentional. Oh, it's intentional. Oh, it's intentional. It's intentional. I've been going for a long time. Oh, it's intentional. Oh, it's intentional. Never fading. It's intentional. It's intentional. Oh, it's intentional. Oh, it's intentional. Never fading. It's never fading. It's intentional. Yeah. It's intentional. All things are working for my good. Yeah, this is intentional. Oh, 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 never failing. I know that all oh, 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 things are working for my good. Yeah, yeah. Cause he's intentional. We can go on and on and on and on. It's never failing. Whatever you're going through, just dust it off. Cause you know it's intentional. It's intentional. It's intentional. It's intentional. Let's go. It's intentional. It's been doing it for a long time. I have been doing it for a long time. It's never failing. It's never failing. It's never failing. Cause it's intentional. It's intentional. Yeah. It's intentional. And it's never failing. We can go on and on, but let's just stop here. Thank you. Let's appreciate them. It's a very simple song, but 
Oh, I think it's one of the most powerful messages you're going to you're going to hear. A Maxwell release. I think Pastor Lumi they played it for you last sometime last year. I was out of the country, if I remember very well. John Maxwell about being intentional. It's amazing that we didn't think that God is intentional. Amen. Nothing, nothing happens by accident. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Not where you were born, not who your father is. Not the situation you find yourself. God is good. And his mercy is endured forever. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, you know, I, um, I hate having two services being identical. I hate having services where you can predict what is going to happen. This morning, I'm doing something strange. I'm combining two people in one service. Uh, it's a privilege. Most of you have no idea of what honor and privilege it is to have Dr. Adebola as part of this church. You have no idea. Uh, a few days ago, I put up one of his uh, video clips that he had done maybe a year ago on Ifa. And uh, some people, one guy wrote from, I think the guy is in America, so he wrote and said, I hope you people have been cataloging the knowledge from that man's head. That's, what, that's the comment they put on Facebook. He says, I hope you people have been cataloging information that this guy has. We've got to grab everything from him and put it in books for generations yet unborn. Amen? Because I think he's, I've known him for many, many years. Most of you don't know. He got me baptized in the Holy Ghost before the World War. To tell, you how, to tell you how old he is. Praise the Lord. And then I've also asked him to come with Damola this morning to have a combination of the word and prophetic utterances. This topic about radical love, it's not something you preach as much as something you experience. And it's also something you need to look for. The Bible says we have not been able to fathom the depth, the height, the length, nor the breadth. God is telling you something like that. As a matter of fact, the, the, in the book of Revelation, it's just about four square city. Remember that? High, wide. We haven't started to comprehend because we have no understanding of what love is. Everything we've known about love, we've known from our parents, from our friends, from our families. I want to tell you, that is probably the least thing you know about love. I hope this morning will be an adventure for you. Dr. Debola is going to come first. After that, Sister Damala will come and then we'll have both of them on stage for an open Q&A session. Is that okay with you? Huh? Well, you don't have a choice. I'm still the pastor in charge. So what are you going to do about it? You want to leave church? You've already left before. We know. Praise the Lord. Let's welcome Dr. Tunde Adegwala. I don't know what to say. When a Christian starts talking about Ifa and he says, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Better pray for him. <laughs> Uh, good morning, church. Um, this is a, a departure from the usual. I'm usually here when pastor is not in church. Uh, for a change, he's here. And I would uh, always wanted to thank him for us allowing me to share the word. And uh, each time he brings me up here, he's not here send pastor smith send sister ej send other people but today i want to say thank you very much for allowing me to preach the word um the title of my word this morning is a uh, radical love uh, that we all agree on um but my particular bent on it is taking the cue from Jesus, taking our cue from Jesus. Um, looking at how Jesus expressed radical love and doing us thou likewise. Hard, difficult as it may be, but at least that is what is expected of us. So at least we should make uh, an effort and at least try to understand how it works so that we can uh, be what he expects us to be. Uh, let us pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for it is mighty, it is light, it is sharp, sharper than two-edged sword. And Father, this morning we pray that it goes deep through our hearts, our minds, the totality of our thinking faculties, such that our spirits can benefit and our bodies will be able to yield to the spirit even as you expect things to be we pray in jesus name let me start by reading to us the first 11 verses of john chapter 18 which talks about um crucifixion uh, the, the, the events leading to the crucifixion of jesus Uh, John 18, chapter 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook of Cedron, where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus of times resorted thither with his disciples. So it was a matter of habit. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore knowing all things that will come upon him went forth and said unto them who seek ye what do you want who are you looking for they answered him jesus of nazareth and jesus said unto them i am he and judas also which betrayed him stood with them as soon then as he had said unto them i am he they went backwards and fell to the ground they asked then asked he then again whom seek ye and they said jesus of nazareth jesus answered I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake, of them which thou givest me, have I lost none. Then Simeon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear and the servant's name was malchus then jesus said unto peter put up thy sword into the sheath the cup which my father hath given me shall i not drink it let's stop there i will refer to that much later on but let's keep it in mind that uh, let, let's keep in mind that uh, account. We talk about radical love. Before we talk about radical love, we probably need to talk about love so that we can have a compar comparison and establish a basis for what radical love is. But even we talk ab before we talk about love, let's, let's look at what occasions love what is the basis what is the environment what are the circumstances that necessitate love basically as human beings we are social beings we we exist in communities we don't do well alone somehow 
from our intelligence, we have learned that it is better to be together than to be alone. We learned that it is not good to be apart. This is a, a behavior that humans don't really have. It's, it's not totally unique to human beings. Some animals do hunt in parks. They, they live together. But humans have this unique characteristics of living together and existing together in teams, in communities, in society. There's a Yoruba saying that says that, it translates in English that the reason why human beings find it easy to kill snakes is because they don't go in packs. So if you see 40 snakes, even if you have a gun, you will run. The reason why you are comfortable, confident when you hold a stick is, you know, once you hit the one snake, you have uh, overpowered it. And this is the power of togetherness, the power of interaction, the power of synergy. We derive strength from being together. And that is why we live in communities. About two, three days ago, I was flying from Abuja to Lagos. And uh, it was rather cloudy, but once in a while, it's really clear. And I was sitting by the window, so I looked down all throughout. And for many, most of the time, we are in the middle of nowhere, you just see bush when you look down. But once in a while, you see a cluster of habitations. It's hardly one or two. You see they are together. Sometimes you see a river flowing, then you see a cluster of habitations around that river. I think that is just because we know that we are better together. We, 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 we are stronger. We derive synergy from being together. But it is not only synergy that we derive from being together. We also get into trouble from being together. Because you, te you tread on people's toes. Sometimes what we are meant to share may not go around. And on that kind of circumstance, you have some sometimes conflicts. Yesterday I was in the shop right. I was queuing to buy some things and somebody was waiting for me at home. Uh, and I was really, really under pressure. I wanted to get it over and done with quickly. Then I noticed that the counter next to me which was empty, uh, an attendant went there and was preparing things and moving things around, and it appeared that he was, she was going to open the counter. So I said to the lady ahead of me, who was uh, just about two or three to the counter that we were queuing, I said, well, I think this lady is going to open the counter. Maybe we should move there. And it became, at that moment, just became apparent that the lady was going to open the counter. And as we were moving, some lady just ran and got in front of me. And I said, you can't do that. I said, excuse me, sir. I didn't meet you on the queue. <laughs> and I said, you possibly can run faster than me. So if I had run also, I would have got there before you. I just did not run because I felt it was polite not to run. I said, by the way, the queue was invented because of people like you because if you and i are supposed to struggle to get you will not never get there you will be the one that will lose most of the time and this is the kind of conflict that happens when you have to share things whenever what we need to use together is not enough there will be conflicts as to how to make things go around so people we pray on people's toes and all that. So there came justice. So that when we tread on each other's toes, we find ways around it. So we adopted justice as a means of guiding our interactions 
our relationships when we tread on toes when things go wrong we set we, we, we bring forth the, the concept of equity in which we, we say each person has their rights and one person's right does not transcend that of the other so we have ways we have rules we have principles by which we can live in society and if there are infractions we know how to uh, make amends how to repair things we live by some written rules some not written some just a matter of etiquette some, uh, once you see this kind of thing you know how to react to it some are actually written and they can be quoted to you at this are the ways we have decided to live in this society so basically if you give me i'll give you if you do good to me i'll do good to you if you slap me i'll slap you uh, an eye for an eye and that was the situation largely in the old testament uh, it was the law of Moses, an eye for an eye. But, you know, it was someone said that uh, an eye for an eye produces a blind country. Because if uh, you hit my eye, I hit your eye. Whereas, if for any reason you hit me and I lose my eye, maybe I can negotiate with you to help me with the things that a person who can't see <laughs> cannot get. But if I have taken your own eyes too, then we are in the same uh, boat. So justice may be logical. It may appeal to our senses. And sometimes we even appeal to a perversion of God's sense of justice. We say, do me and do you, God no go vex. And we use that to justify that we can do as uh, we wish but it's interesting that the god from whom we derived the concept of justice god who we even we know as a just god we even sing about him as a just god saw the limitations of justice and that was why god brought about a more excellent way one that goes beyond justice Just, uh, justice as the word of god talks, uh, tells us suggests the soul that sinneth it shall die but love presents the alternative, presents life in Christ Jesus. So even though justice says the souls that sinneth should die, God used love to administer justice by bringing to the fore the law of life in Christ Jesus. So love that as, as presented by God certainly is a more excellent way than justice. Justice has its role in society, but certainly love has something beyond justice. Because I was thinking about this idea of a more excellent way, I was impelled to look at Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, where it talks about but honestly uh, covet the best gift where Paul was talking to the Corinthians about gifts of the Spirit and then says that and yet I show unto you a more excellent way and reading further down the line when you get to Corinthians 14 you uh, in chapter 1 it says honestly pursue love first and foremost and eagerly desire spiritual gifts especially 
gift of prophecy. The point here is that all the gifts that God has given us to, 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 to administer our lives, to, to control our work with him, to en enable us to do that which he expects of us, love plays a very, very important role in making all this come to pass. Love is what happened between God and man. When God found that man was in sin and he had established that the soul that sinneth shall die, he had to use the law of life in Christ Jesus to bring about a way out of that uh, tough justice. But what really is this love? Let's, let's look a bit closely at what love is. I looked at a few dictionaries, searched a few uh, books, various areas that talk about love. And some of the ideas that I got, I put together. One of them is that love is a strong desire to bring the best out of someone else. Love is a strong desire to bring the best out of someone else. Justice demands that if you do something wrong to me, I am allowed at least to get a recompense, to, to, be, to be, as it were, rewarded for you doing me something wrong. But love says something else. Love is a strong desire to bring the best out of someone else. But when somebody, they may be weak, they may be weary, they may, be, they may not be able to be to you what you expect them to be. But love moves you. Love impels you to help them to bring the best out of them. And love may manifest as a longing for emotional union with another person. I found out also that love is a complex set of emotions that could be propelled by what you believe in, your belief, what your, the way you understand uh, life the principles on which you base your life. And this complex set of emotions based on what you believe can lead to certain behaviors such as a strong feeling of affection, an emotional attachment, and a quest to protect the person. It brings about warmth towards a person and respect towards them. These are some of the elements of love. All these things we have said about love, we have based them on love of between human beings, love between people. But you find that a lot of this also apply to the way we treat non-human objects. Animals, some people are bird watchers. They go into the bush. They make sacrifices. They stay in the bush for days, sometimes months, just trying to, to sight a particular type of bird that they've not seen. I mean, that must be some kind of love for that kind of animal, for you to do that. Uh, people domesticate animals. They take care of them. They, they feed them. Some people's um, budget for their domesticated animal is even more than the school fees of some other people's children. And that's some kind of love. And we may also express love towards ideas, ideals, principles. We may have this attachment, attraction to certain principles, beliefs, that we, be, that, 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 that we 
we understand as desirable and that will bring us to, uh, to we, we will bring us to the kind of results that we want. But when we look beyond this love for objects and other things other than humans, we find that in every human is this desire to love and be loved. Every normal, emotionally balanced person has this quest to love and be loved. It's an innate capacity that you have that every normal person has. We tend to seek for the approval of others. We, we are happy when other people approve of us, when they are approving of our behavior, of our attitude, of the things we do. And these are very, very important characteristics. But the problem is that in our expression of love, sometimes we tend to want to be loved more than we love. That's the time we say things like, if you are sure you really love me, do this. Why is it not to show you that I really love you, I will do this? So we find there that even God's solution to the problems of justice, we have even perverted. And even love that God has shown to us and has shown us as a way of life, a way that will that will organize our intera interactions with other people. That we as humans have even perverted it, and we find that love sometimes is expressed in ways that is much, much, much less than desirable. The love that God showed us is unconditional love in the fact that even when we were yet sinners he had, he made his son to die for us but we in dealing with god we seem to have this conditional love for god god if i get that car then i will do this god if i get a son he will serve you and we have this kind of attitude towards God. And that is how much we understand love and we express our love as it were, conditionally. Whereas God that showed us love, in that while we were yet sinners, allowed his son to die for us. And Jesus himself who died, so loved us so much that he laid down his life some of these are natural instincts natural instincts but we need to be able to deal with them and so that we can love exactly how god ex ex expects us to love it's because of this perversion that we sometimes exploit other people's love for us. We know that because this person loves us, he will go to any length to do anything. And we will exploit that feeling of the person, knowing that we, we are not really deserving of that love. Because the person is in a state where, because they love, they will go to any length to want to bring out the best in us. But we, in the process, use that situation to, as it were, diminish the person. We do not always reciprocate love, and we are supposed to, because love is fundamentally reciprocal. It is a basis of human interaction. It's not a one-way traffic. 
It is a basis of human interaction. And when we talk of interaction, we are talking of a two-way uh, relationship. So the fact that we are not sometimes able to reciprocate love also is a, is, 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 is a reflection of our lack of full understanding and ability to behave uh, the way God wants us to behave. We know that love, as I said earlier on, is a complex set of emotions. I, it, uh, I, well, most Christians know of agape love, uh, uh, which is the kind of love God shows for us, filial love, the love of a father to his son, uh, eros love, from where the word erotic came from, the love the giz giz kind of love the, the one that uh, sometimes turn your head but what we are talking about here today is this radical love that transcends all these circumstances we have talked about radical we look at the word radical as uncommon unusual so when we talk about radical love we are talking about uncommon love it's not the manifestations of love we normally see unusual love not the kind of love we see uh, uh, around but love of a different type love of a type that we do not see all the time but which incidentally is love at its essence the core of love the the the, the exact what love is supposed to be I'm sure you will have heard the statement true love before true love now when you say when if we can talk of true love it means there is lie lie love it means there is a some other type of love that is not true love so the fact that we talk of true love means that there could be pretend love there could be love merely under the impulse of reflex but even under the impulse of re reflex sometimes the kind of love we express as humans and some of these things are natural uh, uh, they are not they are not behaviors we can easily cast off uh, it's usually when, when you fly in an aeroplane uh, you have this announcement they make to you all the time that in case there's a sudden loss in pressure uh, oxygen masks will drop wear it and they tell you how to wear it and, and they put the proviso if you are traveling with a child or somebody that needs help wear yours first before you help them that is the natural instinct of us human beings it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the way we will respond when your back is to the wall as a human being the most likely thing is you will sacrifice the people around you and you will uh, you will try and get away but if we go back to the passage we read at the beginning when they came to arrest jesus let us first of all agree that it was not news to Jesus that they were coming to arrest him. And it was not Judas that told him. Because he came for a purpose. I mean, he, he knew. It was because he knew the time was almost there that he went into Gethsemane to go and strengthen himself, to go and build himself up, because he knew what was coming. And when the the uh, soldiers came he stepped forward and that's how to be a leader he stepped forward put his disciples behind him and said who are you looking for they said jesus of nazareth meanwhile they had felt it is possible that they may not recognize him they knew that because they wanted this work done you know uh, 
when as a soldier you are sent on an errand and you come back and say oh God, sorry we didn't get the job done uh, it's not a it's not a palatable thing to say for a soldier to say to a superior it may cost you a lot of things so they had you know they've worked all these things out they they they, they, they were reckoning with the possibility of jesus disappearing among them uh, they may not know him he may be disguised so they made that arrangement that judas who was one of his uh, members of his team will give the final uh, to seal the fact that they have got the person that they were looking for uh, i'm sure many, many of you will remember when um uh, I, when Obasanjo became head of state and the story of how Abiola died became public news. Some members of the family of Abiola went to the courts to go and see what was happening. And they saw one of them in handcuffs following the people who were supposed to have killed Abiola. And they said one, they said, ah, no, that one is not one of them. That one is a member of the family, not knowing that this was the person that betrayed the process so the, the, the point here is that when people want to get things done they don't leave any stone unturned they even try and find insiders that can ensure that the job is done and that's what judas was doing so it was total shock to these people when they got there and, they, and somebody said who seek he maybe they knew it was him maybe they were not sure and he said I am the one. Ha. <laughs> they were so overwhelmed with fear. They were so overwhelmed with power. They fell to the ground. And if it were you and I, that is the point, that is the high point of our testimony in church on Sunday. That when I just said it is I, the power of God just struck them and I just and we will all clap and give glory to God. But for Jesus, he knew what he was there for. Then he asked them a second time, who do you say you are looking for? They say, they say I say, I am the one. Take me, leave these people. Don't give them problems. Jesus did not want his disciples to be collateral damage in his own issue this was settled he had agreed with the father i'm going to do this it is difficult but i will do it and he was not going to as they say drag down as many people as possible with him and all his disciples who have been with him all this time some that have been naughty sometimes, some that have not really understood what he was talking about. Maybe this is the opportunity to show them sample. And say, but he just, you know, as a true leader, he stepped forward and he took the blame for everything. He, he, took the, he bore the whole thing. That, for us, is the kind of uncommon love, the kind of radical love, that we need to learn from Jesus. That is the kind of cue, that kind of example from Jesus that we need to learn. We would be called upon sometimes in our lives, probably even many times, for some, maybe for us, some of us, a few times, to demonstrate a kind of love that is not common. To demonstrate a kind of love that is radical ordinarily we are not able to do such things our instinct is to find a way out but this is the kind of love that is demanded of us in certain circumstances if things are going to work there are certain types of certain inconvenient steps we have to take in certain situations and in such we may it will it will be unfortunate if we do not play our role if we don't live up to expectation 
it is going to be really, really demanding. It is usually demanding. Very, very difficult. Not easy. Even more so if we are under pressure. If the situation we find ourselves in is one in which we have never found ourselves before, it is difficult to exhibit this kind of radical love. That is when we have the conflict with some of the things we have learned. You know, when a Christian says, use wisdom, sometimes it means find a way out. Uh, whereas, use wisdom is a, is, a, is a valid, important way of doing things. But we need to be prepared. Because when we find ourselves under pressure, that is not the time to start thinking how do I react in this kind of situation? We need to have a clear understanding of God. So, in exhibiting radical love, exhibiting this kind of uncommon love, we have two dimensions of this expression of love. One, in the vertical direction, which is love for God, and two in the horizontal direction, which is love for our fellow man. We need this radical love, uncommon love for God. And the only way to make these things work for us, to make it easy, is that we get the right perspective with God. We understand God exactly who He is and how He does His things. That was the strength that Jesus used. Because Jesus was clear about his purpose. He understood his father that sent him clearly. He, was, he didn't have any doubts about what was expected of him. And this is part of being prepared. Even though he knew what he came for, he had survived the, um, the uh, temptations. Many years later, he then went to get some money to go and prepare himself for this thing that is coming he was totally he knew his position with god he had the right perspective right have the right perspective he saw god in the perspective that he ought to and he was sure that god was not going to let him down in our work with god there have been things that we have hoped for that we had not got and we had sometimes had the feeling that God let us down. And some of these things blur our understanding of God. We need to have the right God perspective, seeing God in the, in the proper perspective so that we can see beyond all these things. And in terms of dealing with human beings, this kind of uncommon love demands us to go the extra mile. I said earlier on that love is a tendency, a propensity, a strong desire to try to bring the best out of someone else. And it is this kind of love that we refer to as radical love because it is not common, but yet it is going to be demanded of us as Christians. And believe it or not, despite all other things that we might have done as Christians, despite the various aspects of our race as Christians, it is this demand of us, it is how we respond when we have this demand for radical love, for uncommon love, that may determine the kind of Christians we are. Like I said, expressing radical love is not an easy thing. It's not natural with us. And when sometimes we see people express this kind of love, we, we, we find it really strange. We, we are challenged. We, we need to step back and reflect. And you find that from my own experience, from my personal experience, whenever I see people express this kind of radical love. One common thing, 
one common theme I have found is that they, uh, people, they don't play games with God. There are people who deal with God as they deal with fathers, brothers, sisters. You know, it's like a one-on-one. -on -one. You talk to God the way you talk to your father, the way you talk to your brother, the way you talk to your sister. And that is a, a character as Christians, that's a capacity we need to develop as Christians to see God in his proper light to see God as God that says come let's reason God that you can as is where I disagree with and say well I don't understand what you are saying God and he says no that's what I'm saying uh, because it is only then that we are able to really see God in his true light and God is able to communicate with us what he really expects of us rather than us having this idea of some God that is waiting to trap us, that is, uh, once we go wrong, he uh, punishes us. So, in conclusion, let me say that this radical love that we say will be demanded of us in our race as Christians we need to have a clear understanding of God as he is because if we don't, we will not be able to, to express this radical love because when you have the confidence of come what may, God, I have God God has my back I can't fail that is only the time that we can express the radical love and it is when we are willing to go the extra mile for our fellow man that we are able to express this radical love. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want to doubly thank Pastor Francis for this privilege because Bridge Network for me is like a filling station where I come to load myself. So if I'm called upon to also drop something, I think I'm doubly blessed. So thank you so much sir, for the privilege. And for the word that we have heard, I just want to put a practical aspect to everything. When I wrote my poetry, The Praise of the Father, The Praise of the Father is a trilogy because I looked at God as the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. I started with God of Isaac, and that is what you find in the poetry, The Praise of the Father, part one. As I wrote, especially when I got to God of Jacob, I saw God as the God of love. I didn't realize is this radical love that I saw. Because as I began to look at God as the God of love from Genesis to Revelation, I kept seeing God saying in places like, the ox knoweth its owner, the ass its master scream. Israel doth not know, Israel doth not consider. What evil had your father found in me that you are turning against me? I, I just saw God and I remember there was a particular day as I was writing. I started crying. I cried and cried and cried. And I realized that many times we forget this great love that God has for us. And that's why when Dr. Adebola was talking about this um, um, is this one horizontal, the one towards God, we forget about who God is and we need to see God in the right perspective. I remember a point in my life as I wait, so many things happened and I'll just say briefly, I was trying to, I like to counsel young ladies, especially in the church I was going to, that oh, as you wait, Make sure you're waiting well. 
make sure you are trusting God in your waiting. And I hear so many comments like, Emma Bonton so walk para mo walk pa kamo kini wamu bombe that you know matter you are, you are chased in your spirit man in your body what have you to show for your chastity and i remember i saw a young lady she said she was preparing for marriage and i saw the clumsiness of everything she was doing and i was trying to kind of give guidance god's way and when i left my sister called me and said sister Sister, I've always been telling you, you should mind what you say. Eh, this, this, this and that. The counsel that you gave to this person. If you see the way the person started abusing you and saying, quarter to 40, nothing to show. He's trying to use mouth to talk to me and all that. When you see things, don't be talking. I said, as long as it is the truth, I'm going to say it. And I want you to inform the person I spoke to that whatever I told her, she should put everything in the bottle keep somewhere because someday she's going to need it and at the end of the day a lot of things happened around the relationship didn't work and it wasn't just that the relationship didn't work she was defrauded financially she was defrauded bodily and she was very sad so it was around you know a lot of accumulation of so many things like this happened and it happened to be my birthday period and i remember that morning around 12 midnight usually i worship i praise god i give him thanks for everything but i think i was depressed and i put a chair down i said god sit down let's talk i said god i'm not happy god i i just don't understand and I, I said so many things, I said so many things, I said so many things because I realized I couldn't even influence young people again. Don't listen to her, she has nothing to show you. Just go about, you know, try to play your first game and just settle. And I felt like God as I was talking. I felt God was laughing at me. I said, God, this is not a laughing matter. This is not a laughing matter. God, this is not a laughing matter. And I said I was going to sleep and I... I, I, I turned my back. I put a chair in front of my bed and I turned my back like this and I slept off. And I think around 5.50 a.m. I realized I'd slept for like five hours. And when I woke up, I still felt as if God was still sitting. So when I saw that, I just fell down on my face. And I said, this oh God of the universe that i praise mighty god forever creator and begun on ending the one that is glorious in holiness the one that is awesome in splendor the one that is this and is the one i kept seated like this for the past five hours i just fell down and i remember the kind of song that came to my heart that was your presence is heaven to me your presence is heaven to me so many times these days as a result of the fact that i've come to see god in his right perspective or meet his crew properly when i burst out into singing your presence is heaven to me your presence is heaven to me so no matter the kind of bitterness that the devil may be bringing into my heart that look at you with all your this with all your that with all your faithfulness to god with all your commitment in the gospel with all your this with all your that what have you to show for it his presence is heaven to me brethren to show this radical love we need to see god in this way that he is 
And you know, when we do that, it's going to even flow out to our relationship, the vertical one that Dr. Adebola talked about. Because you can imagine me with bitterness in my heart. When I, when I get to church, I'm going to step on somebody's toe. I'm going to knock on somebody's head. But when you are properly, when you have seen God the way you see him, then another person that is also coming with your kind of baggage, you are going to be able to go an extra mile. It comes from ordinary greeting. Like, if you greet someone, good morning, sister, and the sister doesn't answer you. Good morning, sister. Good morning, sister. Five times, the sister doesn't answer you. Even if it's the Holy Spirit that is flowing in your veins. <laughs> you are going to say, what, who does she think she is? And when you say, who does she think she is? Lift up your hands to the holy. There's no holy hands. And when we lift all those hands that are spotted with all of this nonsense, we can be so sure that Jesus can come down. The power of God can flow in our midst. So this vertical and horizontal relationship, this, we, we should have it so that we will be able to express this radical love in our love for God and it's going to flow onto others. I may not be able to go into one and two. You know, the list of some of these things are endless. Dr. Debola mentioned, you know, you, somebody does something for you because you feel that the person will, will, will not ask for anything in return and you keep exploiting that love. So you find a lot of people are so ingrat that they are, they are ungrateful. So the list of some of these things are endless. But you will be able to go the extra mile. Because you have seen God the way you should see him. So I think the life we are called to live or the kind of love we are called to exhibit is radical. It's not easy. But when we see God the way we should see him, the outflow of that seeing of God is going to flow onto others. And when we go the extra mile, it won't be stressful. So I implore us this morning that Jehovah is going to help us to fix ourselves, fix our eyes on God so that we can show this kind of love. This is the kind of love that we are called to, the, the kind of way that we have been called to love because that is the way our God loves. And we have said that we are going to follow in the master's footsteps. Shall we bow down our heads as we just talk to God? Just let us tell him and show how much we appreciate who he is. Letting him know that his presence is heaven to us. Your presence is heaven to us. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven.
time to do the interactive section, but it's, I think, somehow, first New Kings chapter 3. Jesus, it's okay. It's okay. You can do it. You should see. Thank you. Trust the keyboard. First Kings chapter 3, verse 16. I, I, I think if we listen to what we've heard today, we need to reflect deeply. I want to share two things and then let's see what the Holy Ghost does after that. The first one is in 1 Kings chapter 3. I want to see the marriage of what Dr. Debola taught us just now of justice and love. Now, two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. You know the story, but let's read it because you will see the beauty of it. You think you know the story, but you will see it. Let's go on, chief. Two women who were harlots came to the king. Then it happened that the third day, uh, you skipped something. And one woman said, Oh Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house. And I gave but while she was in the house. Go on. Then it happened that the third day after I had given back, this woman also gave birth. And we were together. No one was with us in the house except for the two of us in the house. This woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. Go on. She arose in the middle of the night, took my son from my side, while your maidservant served and laid him on her bosom, and laid the dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was, dead. But when I had examined him the morning, indeed he was not my son, whom I had born. Go to the next verse quickly. We all know the story. Then the other woman said, no, but the living one is your son. And the dead one said, no, it's your son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead one is your son and the living one, my son. Thus, they spoke, which means they were going back and forth, back and forth. Go to the next verse. Before the king, then the king says, this one says, this is my son who lives and your son is dead. And the other says, no, but your son is the dead one and my son is the living one. Go on. Go to the next. Then the king said, bring me a sword. And so when they brought the sword before the king, the king said, divide the living child into two. Give one half to the other, one and give half to one and half to the other. Now, that's justice. That's not justice. Nobody gets any child. As a matter of fact, they could have brought the body of the dead one and cut it into two. That would have still been justice. But look at how love overcomes justice. Then the woman whose son was living, even though she knew she was going to lose the child, her love for the child was bigger than her demand for justice. She sees, and she yearned. What, look at, that's why I said you think you've read it until you read it. Look at what it says. For she yearned with what? When are we going to make decisions based on love? She yearned with compassion for her son. She says, oh my Lord, give her the living child. By no means kill him. See what justice says on the other side. I lost my son. You must lose your own. Business is bad. It must be bad for you. Things are wrong. We all started this contract together. Mine failed. Yours must fail too. Look at what she says. But the other says, let him be. Neither mine nor yours. But what? And guess who won? How many of you know? You know, you know the story, Abby? You all know the story. And the king answered, give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him. She is his money. And all of Israel had the judgment that the king gave. And then that the king had rendered, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. But it was the love of the woman for her child that actually solved the problem. I think we should be afraid this afternoon 
more than we should be rejoicing at the fact that we have not even begun to smell radical love. And then when Sister Lamola came to start to speak, and she began to speak about the humor of Jesus, she went to sleep for five hours, and the master is still sitting there. Even though you were angry with him, even though you were disappointed, I want to show you a little video clip. It's a young, it's not a young man. It's, it's an older man from Ireland. And he tells this fascinating story. Are we, are we ready? Have you checked the audio? Are we ready? You're going to say yes now, and then I'm going to pray for you afterwards. <laughs> are you ready? Now, please listen. I don't have PowerPoints for this, but please listen. Very nice still. First what? time I ever got into spiritual warfare. Vol was on volume, the please. Field. And I was out there with um, uh, four Baptist boys and a Methodist. <laughs> and me, who got volume. saved out of a crime family. So we're all out on the mission field together, and we're, we're like, we get, we parachute into this uh, uh, valley, and our, basically our plan is to walk out. 400 miles and preach the gospel. Yeah? Brilliant fun. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we get, we get to this place. Uh, we get to this place and this witch doctor comes out. And he's got skulls and body parts hanging off him. And he looks like nothing on earth. He looks grotesque, like something out of a movie. And he comes out. I don't understand the language, but I know a curse when I hear one. So, so <clears throat> everyone stops except me. I'm walking towards him, and I'm just, I've never seen anything like this. And um, I'm just learning about spiritual warfare. So it's like, well, I don't even know what to do right now. You know? So, <laughs> but I'm not backing down. So I'm figuring, Lord, you got me into this. You're going to have to get me out of this. Otherwise, you and I will be shaking hands real quick. <laughs> so, he's moving towards me. He's shouting and so on. And the whole village is cowering behind him. And I look around, and my companions are heading in the other direction. <laughs> so it's like me and him. And I'm just thinking, well... I'm not backing down. The Lord, you're going to have to do something. And heaven is silent. I say, Lord, give me something. And the only thing that pops into my head is when I was a kid, I used to go to a place in a northern town in England called Liverpool, to a place called the Cavern, where um, the Who, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Kinks, and all those guys, you know, they were all young guys playing homemade instruments and I would just go and it was great fun. And I used to buy Mick Jagger a pint of beer because that's what we do in England. <clears throat> and so all I can remember at that moment is Mick Jagger singing, I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> it's the only thing that pops into my head. So I'm thinking... I haven't got anything else, so I start doing the whole Mick Jagger thing. <clears throat> it's, you know, when I'm driving in my car and a voice comes on the radio telling me more and more about some useless information supposed to drive my imagination, I can't get no! And that's all I'm doing. Satisfaction! That's, that's, and he takes one look at me, he screams out loud, and he heads for the hills and was never seen again. I have no idea what is going on or anything. And I stop and I say to the Lord, what just happened? And all I can hear is the sound of him laughing. And laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. Like belly laughing. Like he's, you just know he's drying his eyes with a handkerchief. 
I was saying, what just happened? He said, that was the funniest thing ever. I said, why didn't you say anything? He said, son, I wanted to teach you something. I could be as dumb as anything, and I'm still strong enough to overcome something demonic. I get it. Your majesty covers everything. I get it. I get it. I have no idea why I told that story. Except it was fun. to walk for it we've been told to sing the blood songs we've been told to study then he will love us more we've even been told to give that the more we give the more he loves us we've been told that we can you know there's something you can do that provokes heaven we've been told that you know if you just play your part he will play his part while you were yet sinners Christ died that's radical love he's singing a secular song because greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in you greater is he that is in you even that child of yours that little child you gave birth to greater is he that is in that child he said listen of all the prophets there was none as great as john the baptist scratch your head abraham was a prophet moses was a prophet uh, Jeremiah was a prophet Isaiah was a prophet and he said of all of them there was no prophet greater than John the Baptist meanwhile he didn't perform a single miracle then he says you even the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist and you still want to earn it and you got the key this afternoon know him if you know him there is no struggle know him Jesus said in John chapter 17 he said this is life eternal that they might know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent he says you've searched the scriptures thinking that you will find eternal life. But the scriptures are nothing but a reflection or a direction towards me. If you, we can just know and experience this radical love, we become radicals ourselves. I'm not giving my tithe because I want him to give me. I'm giving it because I love him. I'm not praying because I have needs. I'm praying because I want to fellowship with him. If I want something from him, I'm not ashamed to tell him that, ah, Pastor Lord, all my friends are driving nice cars. I don't like the way I look. Oh, not give me this car so I can do evangelism. I can talk to him because he's my father. I can tell him truly how I felt. I'm 45, I'm 50, I'm not yet married. Why are you doing this to me? You say, why? I can talk to him. Because he's my father. There is nothing I will say that will offend him. You are the love of my life. You are the hope that I cleared. You mean more than this world to me. I won't trade you for, for silver, silver or gold. 
you are you are my everything you are you are oh the love of my life you are you are oh the hope that I cling to you and I'm not going to hurt some of you. You have to get to a place where you say it doesn't matter whether you give me what I want or not. You think I'm happy with how I am? I don't know why people think. You think I'm satisfied with this? Daniel chapter 3, quickly, quickly, quickly. Start from verse 1. If you don't know where to start from, start from the beginning. 
this guy made he made a, he made a, he made an image you all know the story move on move on move on i want you to stay to where the boys begin to talk go 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 move 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 please 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 guys i don't know why you do this now just move 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 should be about 20 or so should be about 20 or so 15 or something like that can you move please yeah he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning field. Go to the next verse. And these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, and so on. Go on. Go on. I think we've missed out where I'm going, but I think it's before. Go back. You have to go back. You have to. It's when the boys, he said, they, they, they first praised Nebuchadnezzar. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. You have to beg this guy. Yeah. That's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Go back. Go back. Just one more so we can get it in context. This is our prayer point today. I was going to pray for people, but I wanted to assure you that if you believe he, has, he loves you, I don't need to pray for you. He says, go to the next verse. We pray for these guys. Just go to the next verse. Shadrach, Meshach, and answered the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Go to the next verse. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is what? The problem is that you don't believe he's able. He says, he is able to deliver us from the burning fire. And he will do what? First of all, they said, he is what? And then we know that he... Look at the next verse. But what should be my stance towards God? I want this. I want that. I want that. But if you don't give it to me, I'm still going to do what you told me to do. Hey, why does him answering what you are saying, giving you a car, a house, or fixing your husband, be the determinant of his love when you were still a sinner he died for you why is that an indication of his love for you i have to know that he loves me and i have to know that if he didn't give me that thing i have eternity to ask him why didn't you give me that's what i want you to pray today I want you to please cast your cares those things that are important that thing that is taking over your life you say what once you release yourself from that need it's a release that's what they said he said if not let it be known that oh king we will not serve your gods nor will we worship the god image which we have set up in other words god you deliver us we will serve you god you don't deliver us we will serve you Remember what Pastor Doc, Doc said? Listen to that definition. Love is doing your utmost to get the best out of somebody, not the worst. If you love your husband, you should be trying to bring the best, not complain about him. If you love your children, you should be bringing out the best. But let me tell you, this is a true story. This is what somebody told me. I made up my mind to leave the redeemed christian church of god based on certain circumstances i wasn't fighting for myself i was fighting for principles that i believed in values that i believed in and i took a stand and my family part of my, my family came and said why did you not come to discuss with us because you have taken this decision by yourself we're sorry we don't agree with your decision we're going to cut your cut ourselves cut yourself cut, cut out of your cut ourselves out of your way and i looked at him i said i had this discussion with my wife and my two kids and they agreed with me we're moving i said let me tell you what family truly is family is francis if you stay in the redeem we love you francis if you leave the redeem we love you francis if you decide i don't know if i'm making any sense you should be able to go somewhere where they accept you the way you are no conditions 
asking you to accept God the way he is. If he chooses to give you this thing, love him. If he chooses not to give it to you, love him. Don't put any preconditions down for him. That's not unconditional love. So tonight I'm, I wasn't gonna, I'm going to pray for you before about, about getting you healed. But if you believe God loves you, why should I have to pray for you to be healed? But I'm saying to God tonight, all the desires of my heart, if you give me, I will serve you. But Lord, even if you don't give me, I will serve you. That's what I want us to pray. And we bow our heads. Now put that desire. Don't hide it. Don't hide it. Don't hide it. I'm not saying hide your need. I want a child. I want three children. I want a house. I want a car. I want the biggest ministry in the battle. I want to make it in this business. And truthfully, Lord, if you can see my heart today, it's because I want people to glorify you, because I want people to come to you. But like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you do not, if you choose not to, I will still serve you. I will add no conditions in my relationship because when you saved me you added no conditions in my salvation you didn't say if I will give up everything and follow you you will save me you didn't say if I tithe you will save me you didn't say if I prayed you will heal me you didn't put any conditions I am taking the conditions I'm taking the conditions out this morning I'm not putting conditions I want to know you. 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 I'm taking the conditions that I have put down as the measurement of your love for me today. I'm taking them out. The Bible says I love you because you first loved me. Father, you are the love of my life. I'm letting go of these things. These things that have held me in bondage. God, give me this, then you love me. That's why we make stupid testimonies like there were five of us in a car and I, and I survived and four of them died as if they are worse sinners than us. I have made a choice to leave sin forever. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. Oh, I have made a choice to leave for your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Be it in the quiet pastures or by the gentle streams, the shepherd of my soul is by my side.
that woman he'll do for you what he did for Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego he'll do it your needs are genuine don't misunderstand me but it should not in any way affect your love for God it should not be the measure of your love for God Father we release these needs into your hands we release them into our hands we are saying Lord this morning thank you thank you for Dr. Adegbola Thank you for my sister. Thank you for my sister. Thank you for Damola. Maka Soto no Padadai. Zetene no Soto Toto Padamata Palasa Tadadai. I don't know, Sister Damola. I'm going to say something. And it might not make sense to you. Because in a way, it doesn't make, it makes sense to me, but in a different way. There's a difference between the people I send you to and the people I send to help you. They come from two different ends. The people I send you to need you. The people I send to support you have your back. I can, I'm trying to explain this. There's a circle you need to begin to run in. It has nothing to do with your ministry or your ministry gifts. But it has to do with you as a person as a person i'll explain privately a little bit later but there's two different circles we're sent to people but it's not from those people god wants to meet our needs or to help us there's a separate set of people god has set aside it's like jonathan and david your jonathan is not where you are helping the people it's somewhere else i don't know if you get the point i'm trying to make god it's going to move you in that circle. Amen? But it will be a different kind of work. It won't be what you're doing now. It will be a different kind of work. It will be colleagues. Working together, building. As opposed to ministry. God will give you understanding. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for everyone here today. Don't let us leave the way we came in. Listen to me, I'm not saying your needs are not important, but I'm saying don't use them as a criteria for your love with God. Separate them today and watch God walk on your behalf. For some of you, he will give you better than you asked for. Some of you, he won't give you at all what you're asking for. He'll give you something completely different because now you've allowed him into your life. Father, have your way be glorified. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate Dr. Agdebola and Sister.